You probably know how to create a pull request, but did you know you can create a draft pull request? And do you know why there's so many benefits to creating a draft pull request? Well, we're gonna talk about it in this video. So let's just jump in and get started. And I'm actually gonna do a draft pull request and convert it from a draft into a kind of a ready pull request and explain along the way why it's so important. So the reason why it is so important is that you can get feedback on your pull request sooner. And that's really important for you. But not only that, then other people, the maintainers, the community members on the project can also get an early glimpse and feedback to you sooner. Or if the pull request is getting a bit large, might suggest in splitting into multiple pull requests, or if it needs to be large, which sometimes, unfortunately it does, most of the time not, so do, do check that out and see. But if it does, then they can get early access to it and therefore it's not so scary and so kind of big when they see it at the end. I mean, let's have a look. So this is the Link Free project. I'm just gonna use it as an example here. And I saw that in the documentation, it doesn't have kind of a link to each section for the doc. So I really wanted to say for more information, go have a look at this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit edit on here. You can do this locally, you can do it in various other ways. And I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna see where it says documentations. You've got Git pod, we've got GitHub UI, quick start. Okay, so we're gonna do it from here and we're gonna create a pull request. And I'm doing this in the original repo, not in a fork, but this, it's exactly the same. I will do everything in a branch because a branch is required to create a pull request. And if you are forking someone's project, don't do any changes in the default branch, which is usually main, because it will create you so many problems in the future. It, it probably worked first time, but usually second or third time creates loads of problems. So let's just do this and have a look. So what we've got here is the GitHub UI. And if I bring up the documentation, I'm gonna to link to each section like individually, because I think that makes it a lot easier for people rather than coming to the docs page. So we've got GitHub UI, we've got Git pod, we've got local development and so forth. So let's have a look what we're gonna add here. So here we've got UI. Okay, so we can then say for the UI, let's click on that and let's click on the link. And we split the UI into two other sections, but people can choose if they're doing a, a quick start as in creating it, or if they're doing a do an edit. We'll probably add a bit more information to those links as well. I'll leave that for something for you to do if you need some open source green squares. So we can say, um, read more in the full official documentation. I'm not gonna you know, do a markdown link. I just want people to see the, the full, full link. And then we'll go down to the next one, and we're down to Git pod. And if we go back on the documentation and we do have a Git pod one as well, and we do talk about the environment variables, which is really, really important. Not for every project, but for most. So I'm going to paste that in here. Read more in the full, the full official documentation. Doesn't make sense, Eddie. This is why you draft PR, get feedback sooner. <laughs> Read more in the, I'll just say official documentation. I think that makes sense. And then we'll do the same for down here. And the next section is local development. It's got some subsections in this as well. So we'll put one in here. This is um, without Docker and the Docker is the next section. So let's go back a page on the documentation. So this is a local development. Let's grab the link for here and then we'll paste it. And then for the Docker compose one, we've got prerequisites. It's got also these subsections underneath that. And then we'll put this here. So let's have a look. Docker Compose. And you can see Prudum has done an amazing job on this and actually put a lot more information. So if you are using any of the other documentation and you have to figure something out, don't just keep it quiet. It's great that you figured it out. Do ask questions if you can't figure it out, but improve the documentation for the next person as well. So we've done this. So I'm happy with those. So I'm gonna commit the changes and I'm gonna do everything in the branch, like I said. So I'm gonna say docs linked to full documentation. I want to propose the changes. It's going to take me to the pull request page. So now we're on the pull request page, I always suggest filling this in with lots of information and, well, not lots of information, concise, but really useful information. But one thing that you'll do next is kind of create pull request. Hopefully you check the changes and make sure you're happy with them. And you've got create pull request, but there's a little drop down here that most people miss or forget it's there. And you can create the pull request or you can create a draft pull request and GitHub will remember your choice for next time. So next time you do it, but you can always change and I can show you that anyway. So I'm gonna create a draft pull request, click on draft, 
it's created it and you can see it's in draft. So people know that it's created, they can take a look, they can leave inline comments, they get all that functionality as they normally would, but you can't merge it. And when it's ready for merge, you can hit ready for review and then people can review it and then merge it if they want. But if you're still unsure or you're gonna make further changes, it really helps maintainers if you click on convert to draft. They know that there's more changes coming in and they know not to maybe test it just yet because you're gonna to have to retest it later, later on. Remember, everyone's time is really important. And so if you can be really kind of conscious and efficient of other people's time, they will really appreciate it. But you know, I'm happy with this. I think it looks pretty good. We can merge it, someone can merge it shortly. And um, if it needs improving further, well, there's some green squares for you. Do raise draft pull requests. Don't be scared to raise them early, even if you only made a little change raise it early in draft and people will know there's still more work coming but they can feed back and say mm, i'm not sure if you're going down the right path right F get feedback sooner so you go and don't go down this rabbit hole all the way and then you kind of need to unpick it and backtrack all the way and people have done that and i feel bad people wasting their time on it they might have learned something along the way which is also great so it's not a complete waste but i feel bad asking people to unpick their changes and then they've gone from say i don't know 30, 40 lines of changes to like two lines. Whereas if they raise it in a draft right at the beginning, we could have kind of caught it sooner and been more efficient with their time and their experience of contributing would hopefully be better as well. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you really want to accelerate your career in open source, in learning, in communication, so you can get the job, clients and money that you deserve, or well, subscribe to my YouTube channel, of course, but also join us in the Edit Hub Discord, where we geek out like this every day. You get real world experience on real world projects. I'll see you in Discord.